All right, so we wouldn't be able to uh, continue with kernel modification without at least talking about sound modification, sound mods. Now, there's a lot of different sound modifications out there that you can do for your phone. Some of them uh, require work in the kernel, and some of them can actually be a uh, ROM portion of the work. For instance, uh, things like the uh, volume control, how much volume is gone up and down when you push on the button on the phone, that actually can be controlled from the ROM side as opposed to being controlled from the kernel side. Uh, likewise, uh, you can do modifications like uh, Viper for Android, um, which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that all happens on the ROM side as opposed to being in the kernel side. Um, but what about doing kernel modifications for the sound? Now, there's a couple out there that have been done before. Uh, two that come to mind right off the top of my head is uh, Simple Sound, uh, which just simply allows you to control uh, some of the uh, the options for your sound, and then also uh, Fox Sound uh, done by uh, Fox123, uh, which allows some really in-depth control of your sound. But those are for specific chips, specific chipsets, and most sound modifications are very chip specific. Um, so I want to talk about how you can make some changes to your own chip, some things that you might find interesting, some things that you could look at. Once again, it goes back to research. So what is it that we have as far as options to change the sound on our chip? First thing we need to know is what chip are we using? So we're working on the Blocks 2, Blue Life 1X2, 64-bit kernel, and it has a Snapdragon 430 chipset. So that's the system on a chip, is the Snapdragon 430, and it's MSM 8939 uh, uh, Qualcomm chipset. So when we uh, just do a web search, and we find it there, we bring it up, and we scroll down, and we're looking at audio. So we look at the audio, and it uses Qualcomm Oxtic, I'm not how, sure how you say that, Oxtic uh, audio technology. And uh, we bring that up. And uh, it talks a lot about, you know, some different options, audio zoom and audio and sound recording and that sort of thing. Um, but it really comes down to the, uh, the hardware. Now, so there's several different versions. For instance, the audio codec can be a 9341, a 9340, 9335. The uh, hi-fi DAC can be a AQT1000. Looks like that's the only one they used. But then the uh, speaker amplifier can be a WSA8815 or a WSA8810. So a couple of different things that you can look at in there. So the key part would be figuring out which audio codec that we have. And a really simple way to look up and find out what audio codec you have is to go to your default config. Um, if you go to your default config, <coughs> excuse me, and you can just type in uh, sound sock. That's probably a good way to find it. Um, in this case, also, we know that it started with WCD9. It's going to be some WCD9 variant. And so we see that we have 9330 and 9335 in this uh, particular chip. And then we also see we have a WSA, uh, WSA 881X. So um, that helps us quite a bit because we know that we have we do not have the 9341, we do not have the 9340, we have the 9335, and then we have uh, 881X, uh, so either this 10 or this 15. And it's probably that they um, have different models but use the same driver to make them work. So this is really, really good information. So then you can actually read up on it and find out some specs. You know, um, sample recording up to 192 kilohertz at 24-bit. Uh, you know, um, all sorts of interesting things. Uh, dynamic range, 130 decibel. Um, you know, that you can, you can kind of look at that and glean a little bit of information from here. So we know we have a WCD 9335. The great thing is if you don't know where to find your audio codec, um, you can always just search and use the find in your files. But for Qualcomm devices, and probably for all 
uh, sound devices, it's going to be under the kernel and then under sound sock codex. So sound system on a chip and then codex. But like I said, if you ever have a doubt, you can just search for it. And so here we have it. Uh, we have the 9330 and then the 9335. Now notice there's a C file and then there's an H file. And so if you're not familiar with how C or C++ works, um, you have the uh, the code file and then the header file. Um, and so maybe the best way to explain it would be to open one up. So we have this 9330 which actually tells you what uh, options you want to set in the C file and then the H file is a header file and that tells you kind of what options are available. So a header file is very very slim and it's like these are the options that are available and the C file is where you actually would change those options. Now there's a lot more to it than that but I just want to keep it really simple while we're talking about it here. Um, so H file, the header file is just telling you what options are available. The C file is where you're actually going to make the changes to those options. So for instance, you have sound control, new TomTom -tom sound controls, right? And that's in here too, or at least should be, um, you know, TomTom, -tom, uh, all these different options in here. For instance, you can go, we can take this sensing, we can copy that find, paste, and there it is. It shows up in here. Um, structure, sound, sock, codec, codec, and structure, sound, sock, codec, codec. So this just declares what options are available, and this actually defines what the option is and what you can change to it. So probably the most interesting uh, sound option that you're going to want to mess with is going to be volume gain. And Fortunately, it's really easy to find because you can just type like vol or volume. Um, often uh, you can find it this way. Uh, notice that there's all these uh, numbers right here. And then there's table after table after table of different types of input volume and DEC volumes and digital volumes and uh, all these sort of things. So what exactly does this mean, this 08440? Well, and then this digital gain. There's uh, also the same thing in this WCD 9335 where you have uh, sound control and new and then it goes through and gives all these digital things. But what's great in here is somebody was kind enough to actually clarify what these numbers mean. So it means that the volume range goes from minus 84 to a positive 40 decibel max. So one of the things you could do is you could shorten the range of what's available. And in some cases, although this may actually physically damage your device, so be aware, in some cases you may be able to find if you're able to increase the maximum from a 40 decibel, let's say, to 50 decibel. Uh, you just go through and change all of these tables. Um, essentially, what uh, what uh, code for like uh, a simple sound modification or something like that uh, is they put in code here, and instead of having these values hard coded into each one, uh, you have a user space file where you can change the value of let's we'll call this uh, minimum sound and maximum sound and you can change that minimum sound or maximum sound and it goes ahead and goes through and sets all of these options equal to that one there. Just like we did with the um, kernel uh, core CPU uh, frequency voltages where we gave it an option to read the list and then to actually um, read a list from the user and set the list from the user. And the same kind of thing can be done uh, here. Uh, so we're not actually going to uh, do this sound modification right now, um, but I just wanted you to see like this would be where you would go. This would be the kind of files that you would change. I would highly recommend that you look up uh, some ones that have been done by other people um, and take a look at, uh, you know, um, for instance, like a really, really popular one would be uh, Fox 123 
Um, and uh, Fox Sound. And here we go. Um, in this case, uh, Fox also built an app to control uh, his sound. And uh, so he points out that you need uh, you need this set in the kernel. And so then he tells you what patches to include. Now notice these patches aren't for our phone. These are for other phones. But you can look at these patches and get an idea of um, what kind of changes you could make to yours. Now notice SoundSock Codex Kconfig. So he's doing the same kind of thing. And in this case, it's a WCD93. So it's actually possible that this WCD93 uh, XX would actually um, have an effect on our chip since we have a WCD9335. So it, it is actually possible that this would work for us as well. Um, but he did it specifically for the 9310. <clears throat> and then he just had to declare in that 9310, uh, go ahead and read that file there. So I just want to show you that and be aware, like, this would be a good... Uh, thing that you could possibly add to your kernel. There's several different sound mods on, out there. Uh, I think of another one. I don't know if it'll pop up here, but uh, simple sound mod. Um, let's see, simple sound mod. Uh, and there's quite a few of them out there. But for sure. Even without doing a modification where the user is allowed to edit things, you can definitely go ahead and do changes directly to the file to change things like the minimum maximum gain. Um, in here, you can also find the balance, you know, the balance between uh, left and right, um, how much goes to the left side and how much goes to the right side. So you can actually change the, the balance um, or add the option for the end user to be able to uh, change uh, you know, left and right. So lots of really, really cool things that you can do here. It is a little bit on the complicated side. I would say as far as kernel editing goes, uh, this would be one of the more complicated things that you could do is implementing different sound modifications. And I think part of what makes it really complicated is it's so chip specific. Uh, each chip seems to be completely different from the other chips. Generally, they work the same, but they have their own idiosyncrasies and how they're um, developed and built. So uh, hopefully uh, this was informative and you kind of get a good idea of where you could go to maybe do some changes on your um, system as well.